So in the second review of linear functions for statistics class, we now get to some very important words. We have to define the independent and dependent variable when we talk about our scatter plots here. Now, it's important to see that different books and different websites have different words for things, so I'll try to cover all my bases. The independent variable is the x variable, also known as the input, or by some books and websites, the explanatory variable. And what sets the x apart from the y, and this is a general rule, it's not universal, but it's a good way to think when you look at these two things, or these two variables, that the x is the variable we can change. This is uh, not, it's not a golden rule, it's just maybe a helpful rule. The variable we can change. So if you're having trouble figuring out what your uh, independent variable is, think to yourself, like, which is the one we can change? Like, in the previous video, I made an example of if you had a vending machine at an amusement park. So you can change the prices on the vending machine. However, that would be something that would affect the dependent variable and then that dependent variable gets moved by your price change. Now, of course, the dependent variable in that problem was your revenue, how much money that you got from that machine. So the dependent variable is known as our Y variable, and it's the output. So you input your price and you get output of uh, how much money you make. And um, this is also called the predicted by some books. So it's what is predicted by the explanatory variable. So this is not the variable we can change. It is affected by the x. So it is affected by the x. So there is the relationship between independent and dependent. 99% of the time, they're going to give you the independent variable as the first row on a table, or the first column on a table. And then the dependent uh, results are gonna be in the second row, or the second column. And again, I'd say 90% of the time when a story problem is introducing this to you, it's gonna introduce it as X and Y. Unless the problem is trying to be intentionally weird or difficult, but you know, be aware that most of the time you can easily just pick your x and y based on the order. So here is identifying the independent and dependent variable, and it's very critical to understanding correlations since they cannot be interchanged when running analysis. You can't just flip flop them, um, you have to identify your x and y. So here's a situation. A student grade starts out at 10 points for participation. Let's just say everybody in this class gets 10 points for participation and you lose points by not coming to class. Um, you may gain extra credit by being a super participator, okay? So, so let's say that somebody set up a grade that way. So you get 10 points straight out the door. Now, there's a study, to, a study is done to see how many points of a grade is earned for every hour of work. It is shown that there is an increase of 0.25 points for each hour of work. And this would be, um, you know, just work total in the semester here. So the independent variable is, is what we can change, and the dependent variable is what gets affected by what we can change. So this problem is a little bit more complicated than most that you'll see, so I want you to maybe pause the video and try to guess what is the independent variable? What's the thing we can change? And then the dependent variable is what gets changed by that. So hopefully you've paused the video and try to suss it out there, but I think the best way to look at it is what's the product? The product is your dependent variable, and the dependent variable is the grade. That's the grade that you get in this course, because we know we start off with points, 
but a study to see how many points of grade are earned for every hour of work. So that hour of work is what we can change. We can work an hour, we can work 100 hours. So the hour of work is the independent variable because the hours of work will affect the grade. So when you get done writing your two responses, see if you can just talk it out and see if that makes sense. The hour of work affects the grade, which is true. It's not the other way around. You wouldn't get the grade and then you know decide to work based on that. It's the hour of work makes the grade. So the slope in this is going to be 0.25 and the word um, right here for each and the, the for each is a good signal that this is going to be your um, slope because the slope is going to be a fraction usually a unit over a unit because this is 0.25 points for every one hour of work boy I bet you've never seen a decimal with a a whole number under it like a fraction with a decimal in the numerator yeah because you know you're just used to decimals and fractions can be written this way because you're earning a quarter point for every hour of work you can also take that 0.25 divided by 1 and make that into 1 fourth which means that you'll earn one point for every four hours of work which makes sense a quarter for every hour you'd have to work four hours to get a full point. So there's some mathematics for you. Now it says here in the next question, what is the y-intercept and its units? The y-intercept is 10 points. Okay, so for the function of x, this is going to be our 0.25x, because this is our slope. We wouldn't put in our final answer as divided by one. Again, that'd be silly, plus 10. Now, you don't have to write it this way. You could write it this way, 10 plus 0.25x. Though, I would say that most electronic homework, um, most electronic homework uh, systems will probably want it the way I highlighted it in yellow. All right, so for the last problem in this video, I really could spend a half hour talking about how to do this kind of a problem but we're just beyond college algebra and we need to get answers here because it says we're gonna use a calculator to help us solve a rather lengthy problem from your previous algebra class. So it says find an equation that goes through the following two points. So what this means is that a student worked 140 hours and got a 45% in the class. Now that's 140 hours over you know, three and a half months, so don't feel like it was during a week, all right? So the student didn't put in enough time, failed the class, and this student said, well, I worked for 320 hours over the course of, a, you know, three months and got an A minus, a 90%. Well, let's find an equation that fits those lines. Now, again, I could talk about this for a half hour about how you could plot the two points and then do the, you know, delta y over delta x and find you know the y intercept here or you could you know take the two points you know go y sub 2 minus y sub 1 divided by x sub 2 minus x sub 1 oh you've seen that before and then we get the slope and then once we find the slope we plug that into what a value in for y is equal to mx plus b and then we solve for b I mean there's lots of ways to even get an, a, a point slope equation you know y minus y sub 1 is equal to y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1 times the quantity of x minus x sub 1 yes you've seen all of these before but we don't have time to talk about these because again I could spend an hour maybe even going into some of those finer details so what I'm gonna have you do is I'm gonna have you turn on the calculator and get used to typing things into list 1 and list 2 because in list 1 we're gonna put our X values and in list 2 we're gonna put our Y values so turn your calculator on click stat and then click enter now please clear out your list 1 and list 2 and let's put our X values in list 1 140 and 320. We're going to be using your list 1 and list 2 quite a bit. So this is basically teaching us we can take our x values and put them in list 1 
and take our y values and put them in list two, make sure they correspond to their points. So when you look at them left to right, you see they're you know side by side. Okay, so now I have my x and y point and my x and y point for the second student. So first student got a 45%, second student got a 90% or 90 points out of 100 based on the number of hours they worked. Now watch this shortcut, stat, then click over to calculation, and then move down to option four, ax plus b. So this is the slope times x plus b, and it will just um, give you what you need, click on calculate, and there you go. Your A or slope is 0.25 and your B is 10. Well, shucks, that's the equation we had from up above. How sneaky, right? Well, I did that intentionally. Yes, the equation is Y equals 0.25X plus 10. This is probably how they got that information because they maybe, you know, analyzed two students' data and said, okay, well, if these two students make a straight line, this equation would represent everybody in the class. And this is the basic bones of correlation. From this equation, we can type in any number of hours and figure out what you'd get in the class. So let's write down at the end in these notes here how I got that. Well, first of all, we are going to be doing this quite a bit starting in the next video here. We're going to be using the stats in the calculator. Our list 1 will always have our x values, and our list 2 will always have our y values. Please don't switch those around. I know you can be fancy and clever, but just, nah, just put your x's in 1 and your y's in 2. You're going to be better for it. Now, for this homework problem, to do it, you would have to click stat. Because, again, I do not want you to try to graph these giant numbers, nor do I want you to go through any of the rigmarole here to do this. If you stat and then move over to the calc menu, and I'll show that by a circle here, then you can scroll down to the option of the lin regression, the linear regression, and we're going to actually do some linear regression in the third unit here, which is going to be fun. The linear regression, and I chose AX plus B. Now, if you were adventurous, you could have kept scrolling and you would have found A plus BX, which would have worked. It just would have had the answer of Y equals 10 plus 0.25X, which is equivalent. And in terms of math grammar, it's, it's acceptable. In fact, in statistics, this is preferred. It's preferred because this is where we start and this is how you move, which is a little bit more intuitive, especially for students starting out with um, learning. It's kind of wild that we do MX plus B instead of A plus BX, but that's a rant for another time. Thank you for watching this review on your linear functions. Again, reach out to me if you have questions that go beyond what the video talked about, but this will get you through our linear review for this unit. Thank you for watching.